good. Any new projects you're working on now that your show's over? Oh, excuse me. I love Morton Ivory. The Williams had released uh, some pictures of Puff, and it appeared that a man was pulling down his pants. To medicate me every day, you, they could have just switched the medication, and I wouldn't be here. And on the news, they would have said it was because of a mental illness. A bad place. Right. And here's it. And when he talked about the drugs, the mental drugs, I've had an episode of that. Right? The sad story of Jamie Foxx fighting for his life in the past few weeks has been causing ripples across the internet. And now netizens have found a link between Foxx and Wendy Williams. And it is nothing other than Diddy himself. It stands to reason that if you're outwardly portraying yourself as straight, you shouldn't flaunt photos of yourself with a man tugging down your pants, right? I'll be the first to tell you that Diddy hasn't stopped lying for a while, and Wendy Williams' hot take on the rapper was simply one example of that. The former talk show presenter opened Pandora's box on Diddy by discussing the intersection of hip-hop and homophobia in the industry, and the backlash against the rapper is rapidly escalating. So, you want to know what Wendy exposed and how Jamie Foxx's hospitalization is linked to it? Get ready to have your mouths agape. True story, there are reports that our favorite TV host, Wendy Williams, has a picture of two shirtless men floating around the web. The speculation that one of these hairy dudes could be the infamous Diddy has sent tons wagging even further. If you have been keenly following Wendy, then you should know that she exposed Diddy's gay affairs and then had her fired. In the same breath, Wendy believes that Jamie Foxx's worsening health condition is down to him spilling the tea at Diddy's sex parties in the past. Let's remember that Wendy Williams is known for being forthright and supporting her allegations with evidence before we roll our eyes and declare this false news. And who should volunteer some juicy details to back up this unsubstantiated rumor? Another musician who has been dishing the dirt on celebrities like Diddy and Alicia Keys is Jaguar Wright. Wright, though, has been vocally condemning such behavior where others might remain silent. And Deal himself appears to be on her side, it would appear. Wendy's substance abuse is no secret, and it appears Diddy was behind it, especially after she insisted on exposing his gay activities. It seems Fox is suffering the same fate, and it's heartbreaking. Back in 2021, the celebrated host opened up about her struggles with alcohol. And you know I've had a struggle with cocaine in my past. I never went to a place to get the treatment. I don't know how, except God was sitting on my shoulder and I just stopped. A source close to Williams revealed that the host was trying to get better, but no one was willing to talk about what drove her drugs. Wendy has been brave enough to make herself the face of addiction. The source says, It's a disease and a very real and constant fight. It's been extremely difficult to put herself out there and be vulnerable as this is such a private struggle, but it's too important a topic to ignore. She is known for keeping it real and felt the need to keep it real for her fans. Wendy Williams knew that the Daily Mail story was breaking and she wanted to be honest with the viewers. She wanted it to be her story to tell. But before explaining why Wendy thinks Diddy is behind the woes ripping apart Jamie Foxx, let's first find out where she and the Bad Boys founder took a turn for the worst. So, here's the quick backstory. In 1998, while she was a radio personality for Hot 97, Wendy made serious allegations about Diddy's sexuality. After getting wind of the rumors reportedly started by the talk show host, he worked his magic behind the scenes and allegedly had her fired from the station. Once news got to him, he supposedly pulled some strings to get her fired, and thus began a feud that lasted 20 years. Things allegedly escalated to the point that Diddy sent a girl group on his label to confront Wendy, she claimed. Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group to beat my ass in front of the radio station, she revealed. I finished my shift, round up my headphones to see everyone lined up on the side of the window, looking down at the sidewalk, she recalled. When she got downstairs, she saw this girl group jump out of a gypsy cab to kick her ass. If the rumor mill is correct, that girl group was total, once signed to Bad Boy Records, and the music mogul was Diddy. As reported by Wrap Up, Wendy admitted to holding on to contempt for Diddy because she felt he tried to ruin her career. The hell he put me through, she wrote in her book The Wendy Williams Experience, I will never forget, but I don't hate him. And in 2017, Diddy stopped by Williams' show to publicly put to rest their two-decade feud. The interview was something she previously said she hoped would happen, though she didn't think it was possible. I know I've pissed a lot of people off, including you, she told Diddy as their interview started. But this is a full circle moment. He seemed to accept the olive branch and opened up to Wendy about a few personal things, including his love for his then-girlfriend, Cassie. I'm in love now, he gushed. The talk show host, who was once dubbed New York's shock jacket during her radio days, has found herself face to face with numerous health and personal struggles. She was addicted to cocaine for a decade at the beginning of her career and, more recently, has battled Graves' disease, hyperthyroidism, and other physical ailments. What millions of her fans don't know, however, is that Diddy dug up the hole that she is stuck in now, just like he has done to Jamie Foxx. 
Wendy's marriage has also been a hot topic, no pun intended. For years, she has weathered allegations that her now ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, was living a double life and had been unfaithful to her. After the TV producer welcomed a baby with another woman in March 2019, Wendy finally pulled the plug on their 21-year marriage. The former couple finalized their divorce in January 2020. At one point, Wendy was forced to cancel three episodes of her syndicated show during the week of Valentine's Day in February 2018 after experiencing flu-like symptoms. She noted on Instagram that she had not taken a sick day ever in over 25 years and returned as promised the following Monday. The former radio host also took three weeks off from the Wendy Williams show from late February to mid-March 2018 due to issues with Graves' disease and hyperthyroidism. Wendy's doctor prescribed a necessary three weeks of rest to get her levels and medication in sync, a rep for the show told Newsrooms. It even gets Juicer to celebrate her Be Here national campaign with the Hunter Foundation. Wendy reflected upon her decade-long battle with cocaine addiction during a July 2018 interview. I was a functioning addict, she told Entertainment Tonight. They wouldn't fire me because I was making ratings. It's a miracle I was able to stop. The talk host reportedly started using it after being fired from her radio, all thanks to Diddy. When Wendy unceremoniously left New York's legendary Hot 97 radio station in 1998. It was under a cloud of drama. The shock jock had made some enemies of the very culture she was covering. In some ways, she had become part of the music herself, Tupac Shakur's Why You Turn On Me. Crudely refers to Wendy by name. Both Wendy and Fox are not alone in saying Diddy is corny. Jean Deal, a former close associate of the mogul, has confirmed, on several occasions, that whatever Wendy and Fox said about Diddy is true. Deal claims that he witnessed the bad boy CEO ordering R&B singer music Soulchild to remove his turban at a Philadelphia nightclub. How shocking! There's more, Felt Deal would later dismiss Jaguar Wright's claim that he was paid to remain silent, praising her for speaking out. He turned the topic back to the emergency at hand. Wright, in the meantime, has been laying her ex-boss with some serious allegations about what she claims were underhanded maneuvers on his part. It's time to take a close look at these claims. As he put it, baby girl, listen to me. Ain't nobody paid Big Jean off. Ain't nobody ran Big Jean off. It's not happening. Never ran and never will. Never have. From nobody or no man. Sweetheart, you're wrong about that. So, I've heard you say that twice. Somebody said that to me twice. So I'm just letting you know, baby girl. I don't know you personally. Do you understand? But I respect what you do. But you are wrong when you tell. Unless it's another bodyguard. It ain't Big Jill. You might be speaking about somebody else. You're not speaking about Big G. Deal tried to defend himself from Wright and Wendy's accusations, but his responses simply strengthened their positions. According to him, it was his experiences working for Diddy that led him to seek refuge in religion. Jaguar had also implicated Mary J. Blige, so the former bodyguard brought her up. Before the Diddy affair, Jaguar claimed Blige had been hiding her desire from women for years and challenged her to a musical fight. She challenged Mary J. Blige, the queen of hip-hop soul, to a dance-off on Instagram, saying that Blige had been hiding her sexuality for years. Jaguar persisted despite being met with resistance. Further supporting Wendy and Jamie Foxx's assertions about Diddy, Jean's shocking charges about the music mogul in a recent interview only add to the mountain of evidence against him. Jean claims that he took his former boss to an exotic bookstore in early 2000 while they were both on a working trip and that Diddy bought a bag of sex toys for his children. What's the catch? Many were unsettled by reports that the bag contained several butt plugs. After a concert in North Carolina, Diddy intended to bring these toys to Ja Rule's house, Jean continued. Diddy remained adamant despite Jean's best efforts to dissuade him. Many people have taken to social media to express their disbelief and shock at the news. Jean may have some fascinating stories, but he isn't the only one. Wendy is unhappy with the widespread homophobia in the hip-hop community and has made her feelings known. What she meant was, I'm not down with any of that, and I took her seriously. That guy is not my type. In case there was any doubt, the 1980s also had a sizable gay population. Which is worse, denial of something that shouldn't be denied, like hip-hop men wearing skirts or hip-hop men being closeted and having lots of babies to establish their manhood. Many events from earlier in my career have culminated in this moment. Recent speculation about Diddy's sexual preferences begs the obvious question, does he like guys? His sexuality has long been the subject of rumors, and he has been linked romantically with notable ladies like the late Kim Porter. Christian Combs, who is now pursuing a career in the entertainment industry, is one of several children born as a result of these associations. Diddy has said several times that he is not gay, yet his behavior throughout the years suggests otherwise. One recent music video features a rapper whose lyrics 
lyrics read, sometimes I ask myself, like, you know, what is it going to take for me not to be afraid, to be loved the way? Like, I really want to be loved, divided by, but then I know how I really want to be loved. But I'm, but I'm, like, scared to really, really feel that, you know, it's like you want something, but you don't know if you can handle it. Maybe one day I'll get over my fears and I'll receive. After hearing this, do you really believe Diddy is straight? What are the chances that Gene Deal, Jaguar Wright, Wendy Williams, and now Jamie Foxx are wrong about him? Think about it. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.